I used the Garmin Instinctive Solar exclusively for the last 6 months and do not get fooled by the looks of this thing. This is almost a Garmin Fenix 7 Lite. With one exception. The battery life, which is insane. How much has my initial thoughts and impression changed since my first video with the Garmin Instinctive Solar? I think the most polarizing part of the Garmin Instinctive Solar is its looks. The screen isn't all that high res compared to the other Garmin watches out there, as well as the competition. It has a look that doesn't necessarily dig into every situation, nor everyone's preference. And I gotta say that I'm happy I got the white version. I feel that the black version has a lot more retro or Casio G-Shock to it, but many people's view might differ. There are many white G-Shocks out there as well. In the beginning, I was quite let down about how plastic this device felt, and many people were surprised when I told them about how many powerful fitness features this watch had. And for many people, the aesthetic can be really important. I don't think it really show up with the Instinct 2 with a suit or a dress, but preferences might differ. The watch isn't very noticeable on your wrist. It weighs in at 53 grams, and the rubber texture band on the inside is a lot smoother and softer than on the outside. The backlight is not particularly good, but I'm not really bothered by it. I use it whenever it's dark, and when it's dark, it's enough. The watch is actually quite comfortable to wear, and the sides doesn't feel that sharp compared to the Garmin Phoenix 7 line. And when comparing the two, the Instinct 2 has a plastic body that doesn't get cold that quickly compared to the metal body of the Phoenix line which could be important for many people in really cold weather. This video was made possible thanks to GPS Training. GPS Training offers a plethora of services and a web store for your favorite GPS device. Need help to figure out the vast functionality of your GPS device? GPS Training got you covered with the comprehensive guides for every aspect of your GPS device. Also, the GPS Training podcast and YouTube channel provides unboxings, walking talks, and additional perspectives of the GPS devices up for review. Check out the links in the description to learn more. The battery life is one of the most important features of the Instinct 2 Solar, and I must give an emphasis on the Solar. It has lasted no less longer this summer in terms of general battery life as well as when tracking. When fully charged, it has missed 29 days left in smartwatch mode, and I noticed a couple of times this summer 31 days of battery left when exposed to continuous sunlight. You really don't have to worry about it especially when exposed to both day and sunlight. It's okay now during the winter. I do a lot of activities on a daily basis with bike commuting, climbing, bouldering, strength tracking, running and road biking. And with all these activities, I only charge it every two weeks. This is a one to three hours of tracking activities every day, even without solar patterns helping out. The screen with 176 by 176 screen is a bump up in resolution from the previous generation, but it's still quite limited compared to the competition. I must say that Garmin has made good use of its available space though. You can fit up to 5 data screens on it while tracking. And the readability is very good with black text helping out the fact that the screen size and resolution is smaller than most of the smartwatches. A limited UI and resolution is not that big of an issue if you're a frequent user of the companion app Garmin Connect. From here you can change activities, watch faces and settings on the watch, as well as seeing all the data coming from your watch. I have been using Garmin Connect for a lot more with the Instinct 2 given its limited screen size and resolution than what I did on the Vivo Active 4. The user interface is most of the time fluid, but if you want to go fast through the widgets menu and choose the activity, there might be some lag, and saving longer activities takes some time as well as entering them from the watch to see the stats. This is not an issue though, when I feel it matters most. When entering the quick menu, there is no lag when entering your preferred choice, which is especially important when entering Garmin Pay. Entering the previous activity from the watch and seeing all the details can take especially long time though. I remember entering one of my 8 hour hikes this summer and it took more than a minute to load. I really don't mind this on Instinct 2 as I've already changed my habits on Instinct 2 to be more used as supplement to the Connect app a lot more than on the Vivo Active 4. The music controls are finicky, and if you can use your phone or Bluetooth headphones music controls instead of the 5 buttons on Instinct 2, I totally recommend doing that. Even though you can make payments with both your phone as well as a plethora of smartwatches, being able to pay with your watch is just very convenient. Garmin Pay only comes with a solar version only for the Instinct 2. The freeing feeling of not having to pull out your wallet whenever you're paying is just fantastic. I almost never use any of my physical cards anymore. Connecting to an indoor bike is quite easy, but I think this is a really nice addition to have. And I might be overseeing something, I would really like to see the speed data on the indoor bike as well, directly on my Garmin watch. 
I always track my bike commuting for fun every day. It is nice to see how much I'm actually biking per week. I have assigned my bike to the bike commuting tracking, allowing to see the total distance I've ever biked on that very specific bike. Every now and then I have a hard break before a roundabout or waiting to cross the road, the incident detection sometimes kick in. This is a little bit annoying, resulting in turning the future off for this particular type of tracking. I mostly travel next to busy roads and while commuting, so it doesn't really matter that much to have that added security anyways. And speaking of which, I really hope the next version will bring some degree of cellular support. Being able to bring only your watch for a trail run, knowing that your watch have the ability to keep in touch with the outside world would truly have been a great feature. I would easily pay it a couple of hundred bucks extra for that. Everyone who has been running with a Garmin device will feel familiar with running with the Instinct 2. If you're bringing a phone for music when you're running, the Instinct 2 solo will be perfect for most people. I really do miss having the ability to load my running playlist from Spotify to my watch and run without my phone at all. If you have a data-driven and methodical approach to climbing, then the Instinct 2 Solar might be the best watch for you out there. I think the lack of outdoor climbing feature is by design from a safety point of view. You are also a lot more likely to use deep cracks or similar in order to get yourself up. And having a watch that might stand in the way might be a hinder or even a safety issue. The tracking feature is quite nice to have in order to track your progress. But for many people, this is not a must. And for some, it might even make sense at all. My 660km bike trip from Copenhagen to Oslo were used with the Instinct 2 Solar. One of the features I liked the most was a resume later function that allowed me a more accurate representation of the actual speed we were biking at. We had mostly sun during the trip and that combined with the already great battery life, this was really not an issue. I didn't even pay much attention to how much battery the tracking consumed. But I remembered every time we got to our destination, I have maybe battery life left for 2-3 to three more days with 12 hours of tracking. Next summer I will try to turn my next Garmin device into a bike computer after seeing Desfit's video about how to do that. It is a little bit of a safety issue to raise your hand whenever you are looking at your data screens while being on a road share cars and trucks. That doesn't go well with Murphy's Law. If you're hiking, you can follow a preset course, you can create this in Garmin Explorer. More on that later. I modify my data fields to give me the most important information while doing long haul tracking. Our longest hike was 40 kilometers. I tracked from day to day as I wanted to get more accurate representation of our trail than what the expedition mode can do. In expedition mode, the watch will consume a lot less battery, but it tracks the GPS position on a lot longer time intervals than doing regular tracking. Given the battery life, I wasn't really concerned doing tracking from day to day and merged all the GPX files in post with a third-party software in order to get the whole trip. Garmin Explorer is a nice companion to have when using the Garmin Instinct 2 Solar. Drawing up the routes is quite nice. I really like the fact that it follows the trails you don't have to make a lot of small dots along the trail for the best accuracy, which could be quite cumbersome. One thing I really miss is the ability to load third-party maps onto the Garmin Explorer app. You can do this on the Phoenix 7 or any other compatible device, but you cannot do this in the Garmin Explorer app. I guess that if you could do that with your phone in the Garmin Explorer app, a lot of people would not even consider the Garmin GPS devices and spend the money on the third-party map instead of a GPS device as a whole. And why shouldn't they? There's a lot of apps and services out there that are very cheap and probably better for you for your local area, which gives you a lot more detail than the Topo Active map on the Garmin Explorer. I've been using several map apps in order to get the best view of everything in Norway. The local maps are definitely better in every regard. Garmin Explorer is nice to have, but I really don't see it as a full-fledged companion to the Garmin Instinct 2 Solar. And because I have access to a lot better maps here in Norway, I feel like it's more an addition for figuring out exactly where you are in an offline setting, but I would still use printed maps and a compass first, then the Garmin Explorer secondly. During the review time, the Garmin Instinct 2 has been getting more features, such as HRV status, added the summer of 22, that added to an already great set of fitness and health features. I think the Instinct 2 Solar is very much excellent outdoors and sports-oriented adventure computer that sits on your very wrist. A smaller pixel density display truly can't justify the amount of features and power that lies under the hood of this little rugged fella. And if you can deal with the looks of it, you'll get a lot for your money. The Instinct 2 Solar is now cheaper than it was when it was released, and you will be enjoying just so much having a device where battery life isn't even an issue in most cases, even with heavy duty tracking. And that solar panel really keeps up its promise. What are you sacrificing with this watch? You will get a watch with a very specific kind of look and aesthetic. If the design is too much for you and you want something a little bit more anonymous and minimalistic, I think looking at Garmin Foreign 255 or the 955 Solar Editions might be the ones for you. 
I do miss having local music storage in order to carry less stuff when running. But I also feel from a safety point of view that not having cellular capability also makes sense in that regard. I wish there were better access to the music controls, but that's wishful thinking given how the touchscreen made that possible with the Viva Active 4. I think Garmin Instinct 2 Solar nails what it's supposed to do. It always felt like the right companion while I did my long haul trackings. It is also the only watch I'm not worried about tracking climbing or bouldering with its rugged body and smaller screen size. And that's it. This has been my long term review of the Garmin Instinct 2 Solar. In the next video, I will provide you my initial review of the Garmin Phoenix 7 Sapphire Solar. Yes, this time I bought the watch and that will be a part of a multi-year review session. What do you guys think? What is your opinions about the Garmin Instinct 2 Solar? And also, this video was made possible through a loan from GPS Training. The opinions on this review is entirely my own. I'm not getting paid by GPS Training for making this review in any matter. GPS Training that is your number one destination for everything regarding GPS devices. My first meetings and walkthrough of the Instinct 2 Solar was GPS Training's unboxing of the Instinct 2 Solar. They also have a full-fledged course providing in-depth tutorials on how to use the vast features of the Garmin Instinct 2 Solar.